Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. How are you, my friend? Uh, two more big Kentucky Derby prep races this weekend. Guess we only got one more weekend after this. Yeah, yeah. There's still Lexington Stakes yeah. uh, a little farther out, but but you're right. The big ones are uh, last week. This week is a little bit bigger than last week, and then next week another big one. But for now, let's live in the here and the now, Matt. We've got the uh, Arkansas Derby, Florida Derby. We're going to start in Hot Springs, Arkansas first, if, if if you're good with that. Fair enough. Let's do it. All right. Here's the field for that Arkansas Derby. Uh, we have a field of 10, $1.5 million Arkansas Derby. Of course, it's a mile and an eighth at Oaklawn Park, grade one. Matt, we'll start at the rail. Uh, Eddie Milligan appears to have this son of Tappet. We'll take it moving in the right direction, but he's still a maiden. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Still a maiden, Brian. Uh, uh, he broke his maiden last time out after three tries. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, uh, that was a good, really good effort. Uh, came running at the end, just missed by a nose. Yeah, yeah, he's he's still a maiden because he just missed by a nose last time at Oakland Park. Big effort at 42 to 1, but not an effort that we think he's going to necessarily step up and win the Arkansas Derby off of that. Uh, number two is one of the main uh uh, contestants here, one of the main horses in the Arkansas Derby. In fact, Matt, I think we have three clear favorites in the Arkansas Derby. I think we have three clear favorites in the Florida Derby. Timberlake, certainly one of the favorites in the Arkansas Derby. The son of Into Mischief is trained by Brad Cox. And we've known about Timberlake since last summer when he broke his maiden at Ellis Park by more than nine lengths, Matt. Yeah, uh, that's for sure, Brian. Timberlake, uh, 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 an, another of the Brad Cox horses uh, uh, that we've seen on the Derby Trail this year. He's got 66 Derby points already. I think he's the only horse in this field that uh, definitely has a spot lock, locked up in the Kentucky Derby at this point, which may might make some people concerned about whether uh, Timberlake will be at 100% for this. I don't know, Brian. That's not really a concern for me because I, when Brad Cox sends his horses into big big races like this, regardless of the circumstances, he has them ready to win. Yeah, he has them ready to win. He he needs to run a good race in my mind to have his best chance in the Kentucky Derby as well. Uh, he's only had one race this year. It was a very good race. He won the Rebel over the track, a mile 16th, uh, did it by two lengths with a wide trip. This is certainly a tougher field on uh, a Saturday in the Arkansas Derby, but uh, Timberlake, he's got some speed, but I, I think he'll be uh, held just off the pace with Flavian Pratt, nice stalking position. He'll have to work that out from an inside post position, but uh, certainly one of the horses to beat. Won the grade one champagne last year, uh, looking for his third graded stakes victory on Saturday. Number three, number three, Matt, it, it, it's kind of odd that we have three horses trained by Steve Asmussen in the field and they all look like pretty good long shots in here thematic is one of them he's the son of gun runner uh one of broke his maiden in his third try two starts back pretty impressively but last time he really wasn't a factor in the rebel no he wasn't he ran a pretty one paced kind of race uh in the uh, in the Rebel, um, he uh, he picked up some places uh, at running from the back of the pack, but really didn't gain uh, really didn't gain much ground in that race. He's got a handful of Derby points. I guess we're seeing these three Asmus and horses in here because uh, uh, that Hall of Fame trainer hasn't won the Kentucky Derby yet. So he's looking for as many ways to get horses in the field as he can. Yeah, there's there's three horses uh, for Osmussen in this race. I, I said they're all long shots. I don't think any are complete throwouts. They could step forward, but Osmussen certainly needs all three to step forward because what they've shown yet is not quite good enough. 
for this field. Number four, time for truth, Matt. If you're looking for speed in this race, time for truth is a good place to start. He's the son of Omaha Beach, trained by Ron Moquette. And uh, two sprints to start his career. He looked pretty good last time he stretched out, and he got the job done in an allowance race at Oakland Park. Yeah, I think this is an interesting horse in this field, trained by Ron Moquette, who is one of the mainstay uh, top trainers at uh, at Oaklawn Park from from year to year. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, this horse that is listed at twenty to one on the morning line, so you're going to get good odds. Right, those first couple races, sprint win, and then a second in a sprint stake. But then that was a that was a nice. A move going around two turns in that allowance race. So uh, an interesting horse. Yeah, an interesting horse who's run three good races to begin his career. On the other hand, Matt, none of them stand out to me as, oh, he's grade one material yet. Also, as we look at this time form U.S. pace projector for the first time here for the Arkansas Derby, we see that he's the speed of the speed, uh, according to time form U.S., but look who he's got breathing down his neck in an expected pretty fast pace. All the favorites, Matt, are, are, are expected to be within striking distance. That includes Timberlake, who we've talked about, Muth, and Mystic Dan as well, the seven and the nine. So I think that makes the job for time for truth all the more tougher, according to this pace projector, at least. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's get back to the field. Now, on the other end of the speed spectrum, you got number five, Liberal Arts. And if, if there's one long shot that's going to run a big race on Saturday, I think it's the five, Liberal Arts. In fact, I would recommend using Liberal Arts underneath in your exotics. Uh, this is a horse who makes a lot of sense to fill out uh, the superfecta, the trifecta, and maybe even the exacta. He's going to be picking them up. And if this pace projector's right, Liberal Arts is a horse who should be running really well at the end. Yeah, I agree with your pace analysis of the race completely, Brian. Uh, liberal arts figures to be one that's going to be running at the end with the uh, with with four interesting horses up uh, up on the lead. You can't imagine that they are all going to stick around uh, at the end. And liberal arts has got 19 Derby points already. Needs some more. For trainer uh, Robbie Medina, who was a longtime assistant for uh, Shug McGahey, the son of Arrogate, uh, won on the Derby Trail uh, last year at Churchill Downs in the street sense and has a third, at, has a pair of thirds on the Derby Trail once as a two year old and this year in the Southwest. Yeah, he's he's a consistent rallier. That's one of the reasons I'm saying he's a good bet underneath here in the Arkansas Derby. Uh, his only race was a, a well-beaten third uh, to Mystic Dan last time, but it was a sloppy track, and he was still running well down the lane, as he does every time. Gets a little bit more distance, second start of the year, better track. All reasons to think that uh, liberal arts could be a Live long shot, at least underneath in the exotics. Number six, another Osmussen horse is informed Patriot. He's just on a hard spun mat. He's only one for six lifetime. Uh, decent races up until maybe the last one when he went out to New Mexico. Pretty dull fifth in the Sunland Derby. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Decent past performances. Uh, before that trip to New Mexico, um, he had a pair of thirds on the Kentucky Derby Trail with a third in the Smarty Jones and a third in Street Sense. So I agree. He's going to have to do a whole lot better in this pretty tough field of 10. Yeah, it only gets tougher this time in the Arkansas Derby. One of the reasons it only gets tougher, of course, is number seven. Uh, Bob Baffert has a, a, a pretty long history of coming to Oaklawn Park and winning with his good three-year-olds this time of year, and he may be ready to do it again with Muth. Muth is the uh, slight favorite, actually, over Timberlake and Mystic Dan. As I mentioned, three clear favorites in the Arkansas Derby. Muth is preferred by the or, uh, morning line odds maker at eight to five. This son of good magic uh, purchased for two million dollars as a two-year-old. Matt, he's really done nothing wrong, and he's been running against good horses. Yep, nothing wrong, Brian. Five career starts, no finish worse than second place. 
the son of good magic most recently was seen on the track january 6th so that's almost three months brian since a victory in the seven furlong uh san vicente i wouldn't mind that uh being a seven furlong uh stake in most cases i am a little concerned about that uh, amount of time between races of course we saw him run second in the breeders cup juvenile last year behind the eventual champion fierceness he also as a two-year-old won the american pharaoh in total he has vacated 25 kentucky derby points because of baffert's ineligibility yeah, yeah, that's right. He's not uh, going to run in the Kentucky Derby, but I would expect with a good performance here, he will come back in the Preakness. And I, I'm expecting a good performance here, Matt. You're right. It's been 12 weeks since that San Vicente win at seven furlongs. That was his second grade and six win. The American Pharaoh, of course, being a grade one that Matt mentioned uh, as a two-year-old second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And of the three, uh, I, I know the time form U.S. Pace Projector kind of had the three favorites all stalking time for a truth. I think Muth is the most likely to be pretty darn close uh, to that early pace. And, and that might be an advantage here. If it's too fast, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but uh, give me Muth ahead of Timberlake, who he beat in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and ahead of Mystic Dan early. And I think that might be a little advantage. Another thing I like about Muth, Matt, you said 12 weeks between, uh, between races since that last one. He's had three consecutive strong six furlong workouts at Santa Anita. I think Baffert probably has him ready to roll. Number eight is Just Steel. We're pretty familiar with Just Steel by now on the Kentucky Derby Trail, Matt. Son of Justify for D. Wayne Lucas. He's a stakes winner, but that came at six furlongs. Recently, he's been... Uh, I don't want to say an also ran because he has a couple of seconds in there, but he's been uh, he's been pretty easily beaten in three consecutive stakes races over the track. Yeah, and especially last time in the Rebel when he was seventh. Uh, we've got a lot of Rebel uh, also rans in this field, but he does have 15 Derby points to his credit with, from a second in the Southwest and a second in the uh, uh, Smarty Jones for Hall of Fame trainer D. Wayne Lucas, who has won this race twice in the past, but they were way in the past, Brian. Yeah, Althea's, uh, Althea hasn't been around uh, lately, Matt. And uh, yeah, he, he was uh, pretty well beaten in both of his runner-up performances before a disappointing rebel. Not a horse without hope, but... Uh, uh, I'm looking at others that I like better in here. And one of the ones I like better, of course, is number nine, Mystic Dan. Mystic Dan, an oppressive maiden winner at uh, Churchill Downs going short with the son of Golden Sense for trainer Kenny McPeak. Uh, he's had an excuse or two and maybe didn't run his best when he was uh, uh, pushing the pace as he stretched out a little bit. But last time, everything worked out very well in the Southwest. McKeek, McPeak decided to wait skip the Rebel, and wait for the Arkansas Derby with a colt I know he likes a lot. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I think one of those disappointing performances was a fifth in uh, Smarty Jones, but then, uh, then came the uh, Southwest where Mystic Dan just romped by eight lengths, uh, producing a speed figure that tops this field of all the runners, very, very clearly, uh, um, where'd that race come from? Was it the, the muddy sealed track? And those sealed tracks can get packed down pretty hard, and especially when they're muddy and, and there's not a lot of water on the surface. Um, was was that performance in the Southwest a, a one-time thing? I'm not sure. That's why I'm calling Mystic Dan a bit of a, a wild card. Yeah, I, I, I tell you what, uh, that performance in the Southwest was one of the best three-year-old performances of the year. I know it came on a muddy track, but Mystic Dan also had a big performance on a fast track as a two-year-old. Uh, I think Mystic Dan is for real, and uh, the fact that he's got a big win over the track um, makes him even more dangerous in here. Like I said, I think they taught him to relax just a little bit early, and I think we'll see that here in the Arkansas Derby where he won't be far out of it. But I, 
kind of alluded that I do expect him to be behind Muth early in the Arkansas Derby. A very interesting horse for training Kenny McPeak. Number 10, the third of three from Asmussen. That's Imperial Gun, another Sonic Gun runner, Matt. Um, woke up pretty well. I guess it was only a second career start uh, when he won a maiden race there by nearly six lengths. Last time, though, four to five in an allowance race, and he disappointed when he finished fourth. Yeah, that's for sure. I, I think clearly this one will be the longest shot of the three Asmussen's. Yeah, and, and, an, and another horse who could move forward, another horse who looks to have some potential, but uh, uh, anything near that last performance will not get it done on Saturday in this $1.5 million Arkansas Derby match. Hey, let's take a trip, uh, a quick flight from uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas, down to Hallandale, Florida. Matt, you, you, you on board? I, I am on board. I, I'd like to take a flight to uh, uh, to Hot Springs. Never been to that uh, uh, racetrack. Yeah, no, Oakland's a good one. And uh, I have a lot of friends down there in Arkansas. And uh, I wish I was there for the Arkansas Derby as well. But we're looking at the Florida Derby now, Matt. Another grade one, another mile and an eighth test uh, Florida Derby has a good history of uh, producing horses that run big at Churchill Downs on the first Saturday of May. Will this year be another year? It could. Just like the Arkansas Derby, we have double digits in the field and we have three clear favorites in this 11 horse field. It's a million bucks on the line, Matt. Let's start on the rail. Frankie's Empire, uh, Son of Classic Empire, Matt. There, there's some things to like here. He's won four races already out of eight career starts. He's only run twice for new trainer, Michael Yates. They've both been good efforts at Gulfstream Park where he's already a stakes winner. Yeah, certainly I, uh, uh, woke up, so to speak, because uh, his form had gotten a little bit muddy, but woke up for sure moving to uh, Michael Yates uh, in his last two starts when he first won the swale stakes and then moved onto the derby trail in the fountain of youth and finished third that gave him 15 derby points but brian this one is not nominated for the triple crown series yeah yeah interesting uh, I, I think if he had been in the yates barn longer that might have been different but uh yeah not uh, not nominated to the triple crown but two good races over the track. Last time he was beaten by about two lengths by Doorknock in the Fountain of Youth. And he's a horse who can pass horses. So Frankie's Empire, if you're looking for a long shot, he's one of the possibilities, I would say, in this Florida Derby. Uh, a big possibility on the Florida Derby is the unbeaten number two, Matt Hades. Uh, Hades comes to us from the barn of Joe Orsino, who we've seen have a lot of good horses over the years. Maybe not lately, maybe not... Uh, in the Kentucky Derby, but Orsino knows how to handle good horses, Matt. And it's uh, clearly apparent to me after the uh, win in the Holy Bull that this gelding is a nice horse. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. Florida bred, uh, Brian Florida bred son of Awesome Slew, broke his maiden first time out, obviously, because he's uh, unbeaten in three starts in an optional $50,000 claiming uh, maiden race moved on to win an allowance race that was restricted to Florida breads. And, and I guess it confirmed in their minds that they had a, a pretty good horse at this point and moved on to the Derby trail and the Holy bull and uh, stayed unbeaten. Yeah. Yeah. In that debut, he, he got off to a bad start and he, uh, he was still sixth in the stretch when he won that race. He was not uh, one of the horses up for a tag in that optional claiming maiden race, a, a kind of a new race for us. And then Hades dominated Florida breads, showing a lot more speed second time out. And then first time around two turns, he had a whole bunch left when Fierceness asked him at the head of the Gulfstream Park stretch uh, in, in that win in the Holy Bull. So there's a lot to like from this uh, Orsino-trained Florida-bred gelding number two, Hades. Matt, it's very rare that you see Irad Ortiz Jr. riding a long shot, but uh, I think he'll be on a long shot this time. Bail us out uh, is not the preferred Pletcher in the Florida Derby. No, uh, that's for sure. But Todd Pletcher has won this, this Florida Derby seven 
times in the past, and all of them, I think, in the last uh, uh, since the year 2000. So he's got quite a quite a record in, in this race. Uh, broke his maiden in his second start, and and again, another unusual thing was that for a Pletcher runner, he did it on the tapita surface. Yeah, yeah, he hasn't won on dirt. He's he's only had a couple starts, uh, but the win came on the all weather uh, track at Gulfstream Park. So so who knows? Uh, Pletcher must like him a little bit. I think it's kind of a let's see what we have uh, swing here in the Florida Derby, and uh, he gets one of the best jockeys in the world to ride him in the Florida Derby. Number four is a, an interesting horse to me, Matt. Grand Mo the first. He's a horse who ran on that. Uh, uh, all-weather surface at uh, Gulfstream a couple times. In fact, he's two for two on the all-weather surface at Gulfstream Park. Uh, then he ran on turf uh, out in California. He's uh, got good stakes experience. Um, he had some trouble when he was beaten by both Frankie's Empire and La Dombro when he was third in the swale at Gulfstream Park. Then he stretched back out for the Tampa Bay Derby last time, and he was running well at the finish, Matt. He was in a three-way photo there for the win. Um, I'm not sure how strong the Tampa Bay Derby was, but domestic product, no more time, are pretty nice horses that he was uh, lapped on on the outside there in the Tampa Bay Derby. Yeah, and he's coming back on just three weeks' notice from that Tampa Bay Derby. And I also want to uh, uh, note that in that turf race, when he shipped out to California, he finished third to Endlessly, who we talked about and was the winner of the Jeff Ruby Stakes last weekend, impressively. Oh, yeah. Endlessly is a nice horse. That reminds me, Matt. I hope people look at the comments. There was a big, my uh, top pick got scratched, and I did write in the comments before the uh, uh, Jeff Ruby that Endlessly became my top pick after Agate Road was scratched. So uh, keep looking at those comments. Give us comments, but look at the comments, too. If there's a case where our top pick is scratched, we'll, we'll throw in our uh, exchange horse, if you will, and that was Endlessly, who looked good doing it, winning the uh, uh, Jeff Ruby Stakes on Saturday at Turfway Park. Grandmo the first, yeah, he's got a lot of good races, and uh, maybe the most interesting of all the long shots in here after a good effort in the Tampa Bay Derby. Can't say the same about Real Macho. I, I liked his allowance win two starts ago. Uh, he's the son of Mucho Macho Man, and he, he beat a uh, pretty – Highly regarded horse in allowance race two starts back, but then his effort in the Fountain of Youth behind Doorknock was just not really any good. Yeah, it was a fourth place, uh, Brian. And besides Doorknock, I'm not sure about the quality of that Fountain of Youth. Yeah, he was also pretty well beaten by both uh, uh, Ladombro and Frankie's Empire when fourth in that Fountain of Youth. Six is Ladombro, and he is another son of Mucho Macho Man. Uh, this, this is kind of an interesting story, Matt. I don't know if you know this, but the trainer who I've never seen before, his name is Anil Cordero, and he's uh, not been training in America long, but he's literally 20 years old, and he's trying to get this horse to the Kentucky Derby, a 20-year-old trainer. Latambro is interesting because I, th I think he's getting better. He's actually run several good races. If you can just forgive that nine furlong muddy Remsen, which he did absolutely no running. He had a tough, tough trip, went second behind Frankie's Empire in the swale over the track. And then he was a uh, pretty darn game when he was second to doorknock last time. Yeah, uh, certainly we can forgive that Remsen uh, performance considering what he has done since then in the swale and in the fountain of youth. Uh, uh, yeah, I think this horse has a good chance of making it to the Kentucky Derby, considering that he already has 25 points, Brian. And, and in a lot of years, when we get down to Derby week, that's enough points. So he could pick up another, you know, top five finish. He can pick up another uh, 10, 15 easily and, and get himself into the field. Yeah. Uh, in the Arkansas, we, again, I'm beating a dead horse here, but bad choice of words, but uh, there were three big favorites in, in, in both the Arkansas Derby morning line and the Florida Derby morning line. I think the long shot to, to beat 
those six, if you will, uh, that I like most is liberal arts. But uh, in the Florida Derby, I, I think the ones that have probably the best chance would be Grand Mo the first, maybe La Dombro, maybe Frankie's Empire. But uh, those are the ones that I see as the best shot in here. I'm not sure about the Pletcher runner as a long live long shot either bail us out but we'll see uh number seven catalytic uh catalytic is uh, an interesting horse it's on a catalina cruiser we haven't seen a lot of catalina cruisers yet safi joseph has this one he's run two sprint races they're both good uh broke it broke his maiden in his debut at Gulfstream park and then couldn't quite get there at tampa bay but it was a pretty good effort but now he jumps up from an allowance sprint to the florida derby yeah so just uh a distant step up, a step up in uh, in class for sure. Uh, we remember that trainer Safi Joseph Jr. won the Florida Derby just a couple years ago with White Abario. Yeah, I'm not ready to think that Catalytic is a White Abario yet, Matt, if that's what you're getting at. Now, uh, yeah, Catalytic uh, could be a good horse in the future, but this is tough, a tough spot for his third career race. Number eight, Seminole Chief, probably is also in a tough spot. Uh, son of Gervin, Jack Sisterson, he's won three or five races, and uh, he hasn't really been respected. Uh, he ran a bad Withers, and that was uh, kind of an off track that day as well at Aqueduct. But he came back with an uh, allowance win last time. I think it was also over that all-weather track at Gulfstream Park. Yep, another Florida bred in this uh in this field and and he is a stakes winner in one of those florida bred uh stallion series uh races but again uh, uh making a big jump up in class yeah yeah and, and, and number nine is making a jump up in class too matt but conquest warrior uh one of the three favorites of course conquest warrior has uh already done some good things over the track for trainer shug mckay he uh, two starts back when he broke his maiden in the second try, he really did have a bad trip. He was both uh, squeezed at the start and then he was steadied on the turn. And then he came running real late to get up and win that maiden. He validated how he looked overcoming all that trouble of the maiden race last time with a big allowance win. Matt, I also put up the time form U.S. pace projector there. And you'll see that uh, number nine Conquest Warrior is going to be near the, the back of the pack while the other favorites uh, brought, uh, in, in this field, uh, number two, Hades, and number 10, Fierceness, who we're going to talk about, are more forwardly placed on what is expected as a fast pace. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. Uh, we have to remember that Conquest Warrior was very well liked from the beginning, a million-dollar uh yearling purchase um clearly one of those horses that's needed time started his career uh uh, uh in uh, december i think it was at aqueduct in a maiden special weight and that was clearly a learning experience for this shug he runner uh as things didn't go particularly well in that start either and overcame all that trouble as you mentioned in the uh, in the allowance at Gulfstream Park, and then really impressed in that allowance win. Yeah, he did. And and, and again, the Time Force U.S. pace projector here uh, is projecting a fast pace, and and fierceness and Haiti should be uh, at least part of that, with a couple of others that we've mentioned: Ladon Bro, possibly Seminole Chief, possibly. I don't think it's going to be an overly overly strong pace in the Florida Derby, but uh, Conquest Warrior could. Uh, uh, have a little bit of an advantage here. He's also been the trip. He's also been nine furlongs. Don't forget when he ran third, a well-beaten third in that debut performance, the winner absolutely uh, ran a pip of a race that day at Aqueduct Mount. So Conquest Warrior has a whole lot to like here. Uh, he is a son of City of Light, as is the morning line favorite, the two-year-old champion, uh, Fierceness, Matt. He's the next horse on the list. Fierceness was such an impressive winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last fall two starts back at Santa Anita but then uh, then he asked Hades at the head of the stretch um I think Hades got a much better start much better uh, first quarter mile uh of that race in the Holy Bowl but uh, fierceness was expected to overcome a little bit of a, a, a trouble going into the first turn and out of the starting gate but he didn't and now he's got to uh, reprove himself here in the Florida Derby yeah, he does, Brian. Uh, the champion 
two-year-old from last year. Uh, yeah, he had a bit of a rough start in the Holy Bowl and did manage to get to the lead at some point, but faded in the stretch. And so for me, again, yeah, I, I'm not sure what to expect from fierceness at this point, but I do know, Brian, that good horses should be able to overcome problems that they have early on the race in the race or around the turn or down the stretch. So fierceness does have uh, stuff to prove in here. He does already have 36 uh, qualifying points. So he probably has enough to get in for the run to the roses anyway, but I'm sure Pletcher and the connections are not going to run him in the Derby unless he runs well on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. In fact, he almost didn't run in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last year, which, uh, of course, uh, hindsight tells us would have been a big shame uh, because he started poorly in the Champagne and then just didn't run in the Champagne. So this is a horse who's been ultra impressive in his debut at Saratoga and the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, the right one, if you will, as a two-year-old. But then he's been disappointing, certainly disappointing in the Champagne. And then Last time uh, in the Holy Bowl, he disappointed when he finished third there. Um, at his best, I think a lot of people will still think this is the best three-year-old in the country, but you're right. Sometimes it's a learning experience. Sometimes horses don't know how to overcome any adversity early in their career, and they, they, they work themselves through it. They learn. Fierceness may be that type of horse, but we have to see. We have to see him prove it. He's an outside post, Johnny V., up on fierceness, breaking from the 10 as the probable favorite in the Florida Derby. Number 11 is Iris's Dream, a son of Jess's Dream. Rachel Alexandra fans there. Uh, broke Maiden in his third try. Um, he looks like he's moving forward, and the fact that he won that Maiden race last time by more than seven lengths make me think, makes me think that he has some ability. Uh, it did come on turf, though. Did come on turf. This is another Florida bred, and it was in another one of those fifty thousand dollar optional maiden claiming race. I don't think he was in for a tag, but you know, uh, a lot to prove with the surface change uh, and the quality of this field. Absolutely, he is up against it for sure in the eleven horse Florida Derby. All right, Matt. Two Grade One races, uh, seven figured races, uh, sure to have. Horses in the Kentucky Derby from these two fields and maybe some of the uh, top contenders in the Kentucky Derby uh, next month. Not quite next month, a little over a month at Churchill Downs. Let's get to our top picks. I want you to go first and we'll start with Arkansas at Hot Springs. Yeah, uh, Arkansas Derby uh, is an exciting race. Uh, uh, we talked about those top three uh, uh uh, favorites in this field. I'm thinking that uh, the Baffert horse is going to be the favorite and probably take all that uh, Baffert money. I'm going to go with uh, Timberlake. Brad Cox uh, will have him ready. Yeah, I I, uh, I I agree with you. I think Muth will be the favorite. Um, I'm hoping the, I'm hoping he's not a heavy favorite uh, with the recent form of Timberlake and Mystic Dan more recently than Muth. All three are coming off nice graded stakes wins. I just think Muth is the best horse in the field. I uh, love those series of six furlong works. And as I mentioned, I think he has just a little bit more natural speed than both Timberlake and uh, Mystic Dan. Um, it, it, you can't go wrong. Well, you could go wrong. You could lose the race. But I, I think all three of these horses have a real shot here to win the Arkansas Derby. Uh, my biggest play might be Muth on top with uh, Liberal Arts it, it below. And I think Liberal Arts is, as I said, a good bet to uh, to hit the board in the Arkansas Derby with some odds. How about the Florida Derby, Matt? Florida Derby. I'm going with uh, Conquest Warrior in there, the Shug McGay uh, trainee that we talked about. Uh, I think this is a classy classy horse as was indicated by that million dollar purchase uh, so i'm not concerned about the move from allowance to this grade one um conquest warrior for me 
Yeah, I agree with you. Um, just like Arkansas, you know, the top three, it was hard to separate for me a little bit, but I, I kind of like the running style of Conquest Warrior, given that the other two, I think we'll have to worry about each other early. I also like the fact that he's run nine furlongs at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, I do too think he's real. I felt like he was real after the maiden win and that allowance win confirmed it. I think Conquest Warrior has a great shot to pick him up in the last eighth of a mile here, in the, which should be a very interesting Florida Derby. Well done once again, Matt. Can I get a parting shot from you on this Arkansas Derby and Florida Day Derby edition of Horse Hunter? Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Hey, we agree on the Florida Derby, uh, folks, right? Last week, Brian and I agreed uh, on catching freedom in the uh, Louisiana Derby, and he ran a really impressive race, uh, 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 had some nice payoffs in that. So uh, uh, don't sleep on uh, Conquest Warrior. Conquest Warrior. All right, Matt. Yeah, we 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 saw Catching Freedom come from last under Flavian Pratt last week in Louisiana. That would be an impressive rally. Uh, only going to get tougher for him, but uh, yeah, he was our top pick, so that went well last week in Louisiana. I also want to thank Candace Curtis, of course, our friend in the home office at Louisville for the race graphics. Derby Wars the best contest site out there as our sponsor. And of course, Time Form US for the pace projections. Most of all, folks, I want to thank you for tuning in every week. We're uh, really getting close to Derby, so we have more viewers as ever. If you haven't yet done it, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss any horse centers up into the Derby and through the Triple Crown. And uh, also, yeah, uh, check out that comment section. Don't be afraid to uh, leave us a comment, whether it's good, bad, or, or, or other. We'll see you next week, uh, another big week on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Matt and I will be back. Until then, good luck. We'll see you next week.